We'd like to go ahead and get started this evening, if we could. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for being here this evening, and I'd like to welcome you to the Kettering City Schools 2019 State of the Schools presentation. I would uh, like to welcome our viewers who are out there on Facebook Live tonight and remind you, if you have a question during tonight's presentation, please submit it to our Facebook page, and we will make every effort to answer it if we can during tonight's presentation. I first would like to introduce members of our Board of Education who are present here this evening. Our President, Ms. Jennifer Kane. Our Vice President, Ms. Julie Gilmore. Board members, Jim Ambrose and Toby Henderson and Lori Parks. I'd also like to recognize uh, tonight our Vice Mayor of the City of Kettering that is here with us, Mr. Bill Lauder. Appreciate you being here tonight, Mr. Lauder. Council persons Jackie Fisher and Tony Klepas, as well as Assistant City Manager Steve Burstrester. Really appreciate everybody being here tonight. Also on stage with me are Dan Shaw, our CFO, Ken Lackey, the Director of Business Services, Dan Von Handorf, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, Ken Miller, the Assistant Superintendent of Human Capital, and Mrs. Debbie Mears, the Director of Early Childhood and Kindergarten Programs. If you're involved at all in our strategic plan and are here this evening, I really appreciate you being here and thank you for putting the time in to help create this document and allow us to begin to implement that document as well. Tonight is our attempt to communicate to you and our community an update through the State of the Schools to provide you feedback on how we are doing related to the goals and objectives that were created through our strategic plan, which, is, which was developed in the 2017-18 school year, and we began to implement in the 2018-19 school year, and we are excited to share a lot of the updates with you this evening. We have had some questions that were submitted prior to tonight's presentation, and we will attempt to answer them after the presentation which will be forthcoming. We will begin tonight with a brief video which provides you an overview of our strategic plan. My name is Scott Inskeep. I am the superintendent of the Kettering City Schools. I'm very excited to discuss today uh, components and parts of our strategic plan as we take a look at um, our ability to communicate our state of the schools. Uh, this is essentially a discussion around uh, the board's approval of our strategic plan, which was approved in the uh, spring of 2018. And it was a, a venture that was embarked upon by our community during the 17-18 school year, well over 100 people, really a very eclectic group. Uh, they were made up of our community members, uh, business partners, uh, staff, faculty, as well as students, and our administrative team, including myself, and our five members of our Board of Education, uh, who eventually came up with a portrait of a graduate scenario, which involved four core areas. Culture, they are student success, they are whole person, and strategic partnerships. Our mission and vision of the Kettering Schools is a direct guide, a guiding light, if you will, for our strategic plan. The strategic plan is designed to be a living document. Um, it is not going to sit on a shelf. We are going to be implementing that plan uh, over the next five years. This year we have really spent a lot of time analyzing each of the goal areas to make sure that that implementation begins in the 2019-20 school year. There's a lot of expectations in that document and we want to make sure that we do it the right way. It'll guide the day-to-day -day work because we will be assessing it and we'll be giving updates as to the progress and or areas that we're struggling in. And that'll be a big part of our conversation. We'll also have access for people to be able to view how they're doing, how we're doing, and also areas that we're struggling in because it is so vast, there may be times that we struggle. And yet that's how we'll grow and that's how we'll get better and we know that. For more information about our blueprint for student success, visit KetteringSchools.org. Very handsome gentleman there. I'm not sure who that was, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to begin to introduce our presentations this evening. Uh, we start this evening with our conversation around culture. I'd like to introduce Ken Miller, who will come forward and begin our presentations this evening. Ken? 
Thank you, Mr. Inski, and thank you for joining us this evening. I will be sharing information pertaining to culture. So my presentation begins where our culture starts, and that's with the mission of the Kettering City Schools, who in partnership with the family and community is to guarantee a superior educational experience for all students by providing a positive and innovative learning environment while responsibly utilizing resources. So what is culture? Merriam-Webster defines culture as the set of shared at attitudes, values, goals, and practices that characterizes an institution or organization, a school district. So when I think of culture, I think of the why, I think of the what, and most importantly, I think of the people, because ultimately, it's the people that truly drive and shape our culture. So why culture? Well, we can turn to our strategic plan, and under student success, it states that we will provide every student an exceptional education, one that is grounded in high expectations, personalized to meet his or her needs and interest, and backed by the necessary learning support in order to maximize his or her chances for a rewarding life now and into the future. The why is fairly simple. We're in the business of helping students be successful. And most of the time, that's academic success. However, sometimes it's social and emotional success. Regardless, we are here to help students be successful. We also know that students and staff thrive in positive environments where they feel safe, supported, appropriately vulnerable, and driven by a strong sense of purpose so that the most can be made of their work, learning, and relationships. So that, that a safe environment, an emotionally and physically safe environment, increases students' and teachers' perceptions of their school district. And most importantly, we promote a high-quality staff, people, providing our students with the highest quality, most engaged staff possible. We attract, support, develop, and retain the best people we can. So what are a few of the initiatives we have implemented to ensure we are promoting student success, a safe environment, a high-quality staff, and a positive school culture? A positive behavior intervention and support system is being implemented, measured, and reviewed each year. Students, staff, and parents are receiving annual training on positive behavior intervention. The district has adopted a research-based employee screener. We are working to strengthen retention strategies, creating exit and stay interview guides, and conducting interviews with staff. We are working to analyze our onboarding process to lead a high-quality orientation process for all employees. We have increased safety presence. We have an increased safety presence and implemented pre-employment drug screening for all new employees. The district has increased school resource officers throughout the district, and we are conducting background checks for all volunteers. Please keep in mind that what you see on the screen is just a snapshot of what's happening throughout the district. We have an amazing staff, amazing people who care about kids. They care about each other, the district, um, our community, and they have developed and are leading and showcasing some amazing programs throughout the district. And you will see several examples throughout tonight's presentations of their efforts and how their efforts are having a positive impact on our culture. It's the people, these high achieving, engaged staff members who are truly making a difference. It's always about people, not necessarily systems or programs, and without the right kind of people, most of what we do would miss the mark. And this is my second to last slide and most important slide, the people. Because the best part of your school shouldn't be the programs, the sports, or the facilities. It should be the people. Because the key to school improvement is a commitment to people improvement. The essential foundation of a school improvement initiative must be a recognition of the needs to invest in people, support people, and develop people. And that's why and what we are all about. High quality, engaged people working together to help drive a positive school culture. Thank you. And Kettering Schools has an abundance of high quality engaged individuals. And it's my pleasure to introduce one of them to you, Mr. Dan Von Handorf, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning with student success and the whole person. Thank you, Mr. Miller. 
It's exciting to have the opportunity to share with a community some examples of our strategic plan coming to life. The first uh, slide to talk about uh, with teaching and learning is student success. And um, what I want to really focus on in student success is a focus on high expectations that are personalized to meet his or her needs and are backed by support for, from the district. The portrait of a graduate, as Mr. Inskeep uh, talked about, was designed by our district uh, to be the North Star to follow and ensure that Kettering City Schools master attributes that are needed to excel after graduation. This portrait of a graduate was created with input from national research, local business and industry, universities, community members, parents, and staff. Those attributes are engaged collaborator, lifelong learner, critical thinker, thoughtful communicator, and global citizen. To promote the portrait of a graduate that was designed by the community, we've been recognizing students and teachers who have exemplified these attributes at school board meetings. The picture in the middle there are our fire science students and Chief Smith, who were recognized for their great work as global citizens. Chief Smith and his students volunteered hundreds of hours to help families in the community that were impacted by the Memorial Day tornadoes. We have also recognized our Hope Squad members here at the high school, their teachers and mentors, and also our elementary students and our gifted teachers for their state level Invention League qualifiers. Next month, the digital design program and interactive media students here at Fairmont High School, in collaboration with our staff, will be launching an informational campaign. In the bottom right hand corner is an example of their work where Kettering City School students and staff will promote these attributes through announcements, print, and videos in all of our schools. An example of their work can be seen at the bottom right. Staying with the theme of personalized learning, meeting the needs of students and their interests, we're excited to share the growth of a new position born out of our strategic plan. That is our district STEAM coach. This position was created without adding staff and has been wildly popular with our students and staff. Bern Schwederman, who is here tonight, and Valerie Dupler and our elementary principals have been working hard to get our project-based experiences using the engineering design process into all of our elementary schools. You can see three examples uh, up there uh, to look at. The first one on the left, that is a group of Southdale students. If you can see them in the shadows, they're in a creek bed out behind Southdale. They are looking to design homemade bricks and through uh, Mr. Schwederman's leadership, they actually created homemade bricks that they're showing uh, their teachers there on the left. In the center, those are students from Orchard Park, and those students are showing the product that they had created, uh, their designs for a solar oven. And so you can see their design process. And then the last picture on the right, uh, those are students who are participating in the Farm to Table initiative. Uh, that is a collaborative initiative with uh, local businesses to show our students how food gets from the farm all the way through from the grocery store to the table uh, where they eat. Next, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about part of the strategic plan uh, that deals with research-based professional development resources. Our teachers have been working extremely hard to learn and use new, highly rated, research-based curriculum products, Eureka Math, kindergarten through eighth grade, and Study Sync, sixth through eighth grade. All of our kindergarten through fifth grade teachers have received three days of professional training, and our sixth through eighth grade teachers will get their third day of training in Eureka in October. Our middle school English teachers are receiving ongoing support using these top tier curricula for our students. This is an example of the district supporting our excellent teachers, teaching staff in data-based professional development resources. Another really exciting opportunity for our staff coming up is professional development focused around the world-renowned educational researcher, John Hattie. 
John Hattie has compiled the most extensive research on what impacts student achievement. Our outstanding teaching staff will have the opportunity to learn, share, and collaborate using his research to grow as professionals. In a joint partnership with the Montgomery County Educational Service Center, we're able to have world-renowned speaker and researcher John Hattie come here to Kettering to present to our teachers and staff next year. Next, that's some of John Hattie's work, and if you're in excited and inspired by that, uh, he has a number of books on educational research uh, that our staff uh, are currently investigating. Next, I wanted to talk to uh, for a minute about the whole person. A neat thing in the strategic plan process, our community asked for whole person to be a part of our strategic plan. This is a commitment to go above and beyond the traditional focus of reading and math to help remove roadblocks for students and staff to succeed. Some examples of that whole person, uh, J.E. Prass hosted an ice cream social and book fair to promote the community and literacy. Mrs. Stickle and her students celebrated earning the Dorwood Optimist Attendance Trophy for perfect attendance. And in attendance tonight is Ms. Britton, who developed a program called the Supper Club. And those students presented that idea to the noon optimist. Um, Ms. Britton is also in the audience tonight, along with uh, some of her students that were kind enough to attend. The purpose of Supper Club is to build positive relationships between our students and the community. Another exciting part of the whole person is our piloting of a new curriculum, a new social emotional curriculum called Second Step. And I'd like to present uh, to you a uh, brief video on Second Step. Children grow from the inside out, and our Second Step program helps them become their best selves. Rooted in research-based social-emotional learning, our program helps foster a foundation of empathy. It helps children sort through complicated emotions, manage the strong feelings we all have, make sound decisions, and learn the art of focus. All with a program that's easy for teachers to use and helps them make a difference in kids' lives. We don't just help children become better students. We help them become better people so they can create a better world. We're currently piloting Second Step in a number of our elementaries and both middle schools. We're getting great reviews from our teachers and staff. Uh, we're excited about the Second Step program. Finally, we're excited to support Hope Squads in the middle school and high school. At its core, Hope Squads train students to enhance school culture, to support students being safe and connected and feeling a sense of belonging. The high school started Hope Squads in August and both middle schools are in process of selecting students for Hope Squads. Please watch this brief video about Fairmont High School and their Hope Squads. Staying 24-7 now is turning our set yellow tonight to spread awareness about World Suicide Prevention Day today. Six months ago, a Kettering Fairmont student athlete died by suicide. Now the community is coming together to empower teens to fight negativity and promote mental health. Dayton 24-7 now's Courtney Wheaton has their message. Pulling up to Kettering Fairmont High, you can't help but notice the positivity as soon as you walk to the door. These messages left by members of the Hope Squad. I just wanted to spread, spread more kindness around Fairmont and a lot of times school can be hard, it's a tough day, but when there's more positivity around it makes it a lot easier. Ali Machado and Jalen Razor were selected by their peers to be a part of this newly formed Hope Squad of about 50 young leaders to prevent suicide. Suicide has a, it's like a big mask, like you put on masks, it covers it up, like you really don't know what something can be, somebody can be going through. It just happens out of nowhere. And they're 
They're signs, but the signs are not that great. Writing these positive notes on the wall is just a start. They are also learning to identify when friends are going through a crisis. It's a part of a nationwide initiative that their advisor says the school planned to bring here last year. After losing a student back in March, it made it that much more important. It's very scary how much, um, how much growth there has been in, in suicide rates among teens in the last 10 to 20 years. And the, the Hope Squad, I hope, will be part of, of the response to lessen that. A little bit of hope coming out of tragedy. And when you have a chance to look at these sticky notes, they're pretty inspiring. Let's read a couple. Courage is all it takes. You are amazing. And smile more. But that's not the only training these kids will get. In the next couple of weeks, they'll actually learn real ways to prevent suicide. In Kettering, Courtney Wheaton reporting for Dayton 24-7 Now. Another important piece of student success is our addition to all-day kindergarten. It's my pleasure to introduce Kettering City Schools Director of Early Childhood Education, Ms. Debbie Mears, to present more information about All Day Kindergarten. Thank you, Mr. Von Handorf, and I appreciate the opportunity to share our beginnings with All Day Kindergarten this year. So, I want you to think back to your time in kindergarten, so we're going to do just a quick little activity. If you would close your eyes, think about kindergarten when you were in kindergarten. What are some great experiences that you remember? Or experiences that maybe were positive, you knew the teacher, you had friends. All right, open your eyes and share with the person next to you your kindergarten experience. Does anyone want to share their fabulous kindergarten experience? Okay, I'll share one. My, um, I got in trouble a lot for talking. Imagine that. So that was one of my kindergarten experiences. Mr. Inskeep over here shared with me that it was playing. He loved playing and taking naps. <laughs> sure <does>. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at kindergarten then and kindergarten now. In 1998, only 15% of kindergarten was full day. 20 years later, 95% of kindergarten is all day. Why is that? Because it's changed. If you look, Mr. Inskeep had said kindergarten was about playing, that's true. But it's changed now. We have academic standards and benchmarks that we have to accomplish with these young children. And you can see there, by the end of kindergarten, they had to just write or copy letters. Now the expectation is that they are emerging readers, that they can read. And so Kettering, when they were surveyed 20 years ago, only 43% said, yeah, I, all day might be fine. But when we served them 20 years later, 86% of them said, yes, we need all day kindergarten. So. With the community becoming more astute about having all-day kindergarten, we responded by investigating through surveys, strategic plan, coffees, to find out why and what we should do. The board decided that this was a go. They put a levy on to support this, and it passed. Once it passed, it was time to get started. We developed a committee that started in December on the committee were all kinds of stakeholders, teachers, administrators, parents, specialist teachers like art, music, and PE. And we decided in December, where are we going to go from here? How do we start this journey to be ready in 2019? So one of the things they really wanted to start with is let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's see what other all-day kindergarten people are doing. So we went and visited different kindergartens that were all-day. We went to Beaver Creek, we went to West Carrollton, and we went to Franklin. It was really interesting to see what all day was like, because even in those three areas, they were all different in themselves, being all day. So that gave us many great ideas. So then in February, we decided that we needed some subcommittees to work together to come back and make some decisions. So we had the curriculum committee, professional development, facilities, staffing, and communication. 
Those committees worked for three months, figuring out what is it that we need, what things don't we have, what things do we have, and how do we go about getting those resources. In April, the subcommittees shared their recommendations. We talked about those recommendations, and we took those, and over the summer, we implemented many of those. Furniture was one of those. Staff was one of those. Some cool chairs to sit in for those that can't really sit still. And so in May, we had a meet and greet for all the teachers that were hired, and they all came, except for the ones that we hadn't had the opportunity to hire yet. And they had the opportunity to meet one another, find out where they were from, and kind of start that bonding of this journey of all day kindergarten. In the summer, like Mr. Von Handorf said, they were very busy doing training. A lot of these teachers had never heard of Eureka or foundations or social emotional learning. So they spent their summers very, very busy learning all of these things. So our kindergartners don't start on the first day of the school year. They start the Monday after that. So the first three days, they use that time to assess the kindergartners to see where they are. So the crawl is the kindergarten readiness assessment to see where they are, and the district does Ames Web to see what their skills are. So three days before, boys and girls are invited in. The teachers get to meet their um, students, and they get to meet their parents, which is nice. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one to break that ice with them. So then we decided as a committee that we do a staggered start. So on the 19th, students that had last names A through M came to school. On the 20th, those that had N through Z came to school. And on the 21st, they all came to school. We met on September 19th, the whole committee again. We're gonna continue with the kindergarten committee to continue to meet, to brainstorm of what's going well. What are some concern areas that we need to work on? And so we shared where we were at that point. For the rest of this time, kindergartens will be meeting in the buildings to support them and hear what they're doing, what they might want to change for next year, and then we'll share that with everyone. In February, the committee will reconvene. I'll be bringing some information from the meetings that I've been going to of what teachers have shared and principals have shared to brainstorm ideas of how to continue to make it better. So one of the conversations was how do we determine success? How do we know if kindergarten is successful? These were some of the ideas that were shared at the committee. We are hoping to land on the specific ones in October so that we can get those baselines. But some of those, I could, we could already get the baselines. So how many previously um, students had poor attendance one half a day with two and a half hours now that they're there all day? Is that a difference? How about retentions? We can't do that one yet, but down the road possibly. <laughs> And we definitely want to survey parents and teachers to see their thoughts on this program. And I couldn't not show kindergartners. So here's just a couple kindergartners telling you how they feel about kindergarten. Do you like kindergarten? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were. And they did that numerous times to say how much they loved kindergarten. So in conclusion, I think we're off to a really great start. And this is just the beginning of all the great things we're going to do for kindergartners because they're our foundation to get them to the high school to do even greater things. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. So along with a lot of the programs that you're hearing about, it's very important that those are also matched up with state-of-the-art facilities. I'm going to invite Ken Lackey, our Director of Business Services, to come up and talk with a little bit about where we were and where we've been and where we're going with district facilities and upgrades. Ken? Uh, thanks, Scott. And that, that's an important part of the presentation here is to uh, talk about how what we're doing with our facilities is to support our students and our programs. The, um, when we passed a, a 3.2 mil a permanent improvement levy in 2016. We knew that we had some projects uh, on the horizon that we wanted to complete to support our students and the programs that we have and those programs like All Day Kindergarten that we were wanting to implement in the future. Uh, 
Uh, the first project that we were able to jump on right away, and I'm going to go through some of the pro uh, projects that we've completed in the last 12 months and those that are continuing to go on. Uh, I know most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with our auditorium that we built uh, because most of you said to me at some point last year, wow, I didn't know that was going to be so close to the road. <laughs> but, um, you know, the reason for the new auditorium was the auditorium here at Fairmont High School was still uh, essentially the same as it was in 1958. And our student programming had grown tremendously. We have well over 700 students in uh, our music programs and our performing arts programs uh, between band, orchestra, choir, and performing arts. The, uh, the facilities we had just simply weren't adequate for the programs that we had here at the time. So we implemented uh, 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 a program to put the new, build a new auditorium here at the high school. Um, about 18,000 square foot auditorium. Uh, we increased the seating uh, to 930 seats from about 760. Um, increased fly space so they can fly uh, scenes up back and forth. You can see there in that picture there's a, a sound uh, stage that uh, helps with sound when orchestra and choir are playing. So hopefully most of you have been able to uh, see a performance in the auditorium. We had a wonderful musical this um, spring that was sold out for all performances and this has been a great addition. In addition to the high school auditorium, we were able to uh, do some renovations at both of our middle school auditoriums as well. Uh, we, we moved the seats that had been in the high school auditorium to Van Buren and moved uh, lighting and sound equipment to Kettering Middle School to uh, provide an upgrade to both of those auditoriums as well. Uh, so this summer, uh, knowing that all day kindergarten uh, was gonna be implemented in all the buildings, uh, we had put together a plan. Uh, we had actually first thought we would have to phase in that implementation, but in working with our principals and looking at our space, uh, we came up with a plan that we would able to implement it at all of our buildings knowing that we were going to have to get some projects done this summer to accommodate that. So some of the projects that uh, had to be started and finished this summer uh, was we added uh, four new classrooms at John F. Kennedy Elementary. Uh, we went into the um, uh, locker bays, those had large locker bays because it was a former junior high, and created four new classrooms and put some, replaced some new lockers in there, uh, four nice new bright classrooms at John F. Kennedy Elementary. At J.E. Prass, we split uh, uh, a significantly large library in just two spaces so that we would have uh, an additional kindergarten classroom. The new kindergarten classroom on the left with the carpet and the um, new casework. And then we split another classroom and another hallway into two smaller spaces for uh, tutoring and um, our intervention specialists to uh, work with students in those areas. At Oakview Elementary, we took a space that was uh, originally a computer lab, or actually that space has been many things, it was a computer lab. Most recently it was used by our preschool evaluation uh, team uh, as an office work area. And we renovated that space to make a kindergarten classroom. Uh, put win built, it was a windowless classroom. So we put windows in that room and casework and created a nice new kindergarten classroom there to accommodate um, all day kindergarten at Oakview. At Indian Riffle, uh, we didn't have to build new classrooms, but we had to do some pretty significant uh, renovations to flooring and some spaces there to, uh, for preschool and for kindergarten classrooms uh, as we did some shifting around to where the classes uh, are in that building and, and accommodate the all-day kindergarten program. So ongoing projects. We have two buildings where, uh, with all-day kindergarten, uh, space is pretty tight. Uh, principals have worked with staff and we're managing it this year uh, but we uh, for the long term and to make sure that we don't have overcrowding in those buildings in the near or, or uh, foreseeable future uh, we decided to put additions on at that building uh, this is at Orchard Park there's a 6,000 square foot addition going uh, what you're seeing there is a slab has been put in and interestingly enough the door frames are all in uh, which makes kind of a, for an interesting look at the moment uh, they're waiting for Block to get here and Block's going um, to be delivered this week and, and that will start going up. So that will have four classrooms, um, restrooms between the classrooms because that addition will house kindergarten and preschool. Uh, so we'll have the uh, small bathrooms in between classrooms there. Uh, this is Southdale. Uh, also slabs been poured for a four classroom addition at Southdale. 
Uh, this won't necessarily be kindergarten classrooms, probably more shifting, and this will probably be uh, higher grade classrooms there uh, at that addition at Southdale. Uh, that's about a 4,700 square foot addition at Southdale, and that's just classrooms. Um, the Southdale also required a change in the site plan there. Um, uh, we, in the past, the traffic uh, flow at Southdale was right behind the building, basically between the building and the playground area, if you were familiar with uh, Southdale site. So uh, for construction and permanently, uh, we built a new drive around the back of that, so traffic will no longer pass between the building and the playground area, which will be a safer situation um, and, uh, and reconfiguration of that site plan. So that is complete for this year already. Um, when we were going through looking at major projects, uh, we evaluated uh, what to do with DL Barnes. Uh, it was determined that the, uh, the cost of a renovation at DL Barnes, which is badly needed, was uh, going to be cost prohibitive if we were wanted to complete some of these other projects, which were uh, more focused on our students and our programs. Um, so we started looking for other alternatives for the programs that are currently housed at DL Barnes. Uh, we found some open office space at Lincoln Park. Uh, so we um, actually uh, office space, most of it had been open for quite some time. So we were able to uh, get that space reconfigured for our use and we moved our board offices into uh, offices at Lincoln Park this summer. Um, career Tech is a big focus for ours. Uh, career Tech is a big focus for us here at Fairmont High School and Kettering Schools and uh, support of our Career Tech programs. Uh, we did a major renovation of our Allied Health uh, classroom uh, this summer um, uh, so we could accommodate more hospital beds, uh, complete flooring renovation in there and really uh, fix that classroom up to support that program. Uh, we are currently building, uh, and again, again, in addition to our uh, support our CTC program, a new building in the back of Fairmont High School. It's a 25,000 square foot building which will house um, construction trades program, the cosmetology program, and the alternative school program which is currently housed at Barnes. Uh, that's another program we will be moving out of Barnes this coming summer and we'll move back to Fairmont High School. This project will be completed uh, summer of 2020, as will the uh, additions at the elementary schools, which I failed to mention. All those projects are scheduled to be completed uh, next summer and uh, will house students and programs uh, next school year. Here's another picture, uh, courtesy of Dayton Daily News. Uh, it was in the paper earlier this week, which kind of gives you an idea of exactly on campus where that new addition is. Kind of gives you a neat look at it. And this is the uh, most talked about thing in Kettering, I believe, today, <laughs> is the detention area out by Far Hills. I've got more questions and calls on this than pretty much any construction project I've done in the last 21 years uh, since we started digging out there. This was required uh, by code. Uh, anytime you create a hard surface, which uh, uh, you have to create a, a, a system of uh, maintaining that water on your property so you don't overwhelm the storm sewer system. So uh, that is a detention area. So during rainstorms, uh, water from our campus will uh, go into that and it will quickly uh, drain into the storm water system uh, on Far Hills. Uh, so it will not hold water other than just the time it takes to uh, slowly but uh, not It'll still rapidly uh, get into the stormwater system, but it will not overwhelm the system, which is what you have to design. So that will continue to be just a depression in the ground, and uh, it will someday have, be grass and look better than it does today. Uh, but that's the purpose of that space. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about what we've done uh, safety and security-wise. Uh, we've installed door barricade devices uh, this summer and early fall in all of our classrooms. See on the left there, right beside every door is a little case with the door barricade device and it just simply drops in to provide a barricade uh, for our doors in the event of emergency when uh, door barricading is needed. Part of our ALICE safety protocols, um, you know, one of the first options is to escape a building uh, in the event of an emergency, if at all possible. Uh, the other is to barricade in place. Um, 
Uh, teachers have to make those decisions, would have to make those decisions emergency. So um, some of our uh, other barricade options were pile furniture and things in front of doors. This has made a much easier, quicker, safer, and secure way to barricade our classrooms in the event of an emergency situation in the building. Uh, other safety and security measures we've taken, we did uh, add additional resource officers. Uh, as Mr. Miller had mentioned as well, uh, we now have full-time resource officers at Fairmont High School in both of our middle schools, and to have two additional resource officers that support um, our elementary schools and the non-public schools, which are provided, those two officers are provided to us uh, by the city of Kettering. Um, and we have also upgraded our two-way radios at, at multiple buildings this summer. Uh, to accommodate safety and security issues. Um, another thing that the, the, the uh, 3.2 mil levy did is allow us to um, uh, spend a lot more money on maintaining our current buildings and keeping up with our buildings. We really were woefully short uh, in PI money to maintain uh, a million and a half square feet of school building across the district. Um, this is just some of the additional projects that were completed this past summer. Uh, in maintaining and, and keeping our facilities in great shape for our students and for the programs that house, are housed in our buildings. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Next, it's my opportunity to introduce Mr. Dan Shaw, the CFO of the school district, who's going to discuss strategic partnerships and fuel. Uh, for those of you that are not sure what fuel might be, that would be the ability to finance so many of the things that we've tried to do here in the district. Dan? Thank you. So a financial objective uh, is to provide flexible and efficient method for aligning the resources, fueling, as Scott mentioned, to the objectives ultimately identified in our strategic plan. Or, in other words, how are we going to pay for it? So three priorities in order to do that. Uh, one, resource alignment, making sure, and when I say resources, not just finances, but also our people and our processes, making sure the resources align to the strategy. Two, cost containment. And priority three, financial stability and transparency. So starting with resource alignment, the money, the people, the processes, all going the same strategic direction. So a lot of what you've heard already the finances that went to help do that, our capital plan, our facilities, and our assets that we needed to purchase, that part of that PI uh, component, or the permanent improvement, is what PI stands for, is, is the tax levy that helped make sure that we had the resources that we need to take care of the facilities, to add the facilities and the assets that are going to line up and are lining up with the strategic initiatives identified in our plan. Uh, we have realigned infrastructure inside both the ha Human Capital Department and the Treasurer's Office and beyond, uh, looking at that infrastructure to make sure that we're working together for the best method of engaging our employees, engaging our taxpayers, and engaging all of our stakeholders. We have an ERP, which is a, a software system selected that we're moving into place now that will allow for predictive analytics, better access to our data, and being able to analyze where we're going from, from a cost and financial and people management um, uh, perspective. And then continue budget analysis for alignment ahead of the annual commitment. One of the things that's a priority to us is to make sure that we're looking out far enough with our budgets to know, to know that what's coming ahead is something that we're ready to address. That we're never causing a, a, a problem in the system or a problem in meeting our strategic initiatives because we waited to look at the budget until halfway through the year. The second priority is cost containment. Consistent collaborative review of our budget to make sure we are keeping costs down. So you heard a lot tonight about all day kindergarten. Alongside that went extensive uh, staffing analysis. Uh, we had committees in place to make sure that every time we were looking to add a staff person or change a staff person or move our, our people around, it was lined up to the strategic initiatives that were identified in the plan. Uh, whole child resource demands and reworks, we're looking at our contracts, how are we handling uh, the contracts of the people that, that work to provide that support. 
Um, that's continually under review. How can we do that better and, and more improved from a cost perspective? Uh, continue work on medical insurance. We've had a lot of success with joining a consortium and driving a lot of medical costs out of our, out of our budget, and we want to continue to work on that. Facility changes and improvement. Again, heard a lot about the, uh, what we did uh, from Ken, that PI and how we uh, manage our dollars from a debt management perspective and interest management perspective all helps fund those facility changes and improvements. And then finally, benchmarking. While we're doing these changes and we're stepping out to what our community values, we need to make sure that our cost is still in line and competitive with the people in the immediate surrounding areas and to our comparable districts across the state. So we're watching to make sure that that cost stays in line uh, with all of those schools that operate a lot like we do. And then the third priority, financial stability and transparency. Making sure that we have our stakeholders informed. Uh, we reduce the levy frequency. We are not on an every year levy anymore for a long time. Uh, the district's uh, methodology was to talk to the taxpayers every year about levies. We've reduced the, the requirement to do that. Um, we're, and now we're gain, getting the process towards enhancing our partnerships and working as a stronger partner with many of our, our businesses and our stakeholders in order to allow for uh, more in-kind type services, sharing value, and using their expertise, frankly, to look at our finances and help provide some feedback and re-engagement of our fuel committee. The fuel committee that was set, was set up to help look at this at the beginning, we kind of had to wait for a lot of the strategic plan to get done and off the ground now so we can bring that, that finance group back together and relook at our budget and our financial priorities going forward. So with ca continued accountability and looking at these financial priorities, again, the resource alignment to what our community values the cost containment piece, and the financial stability and transparency. Ultimately, we'll deliver a flexible and efficient method to resource or fuel the strategic plan, not only looking back at what we've accomplished, but looking forward for the years to come. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Um, quite a bit in about 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, but it all started uh, back in 16 when we embarked upon this vision in a shared process with our staff, our community, and uh, our many partners that we currently have. Uh, kind of trying to do something a little bit different tonight. Uh, I was pretty excited before I walked up. Uh, Carrie Bassin informed me we had probably over 40 people at that time who were viewing this tonight on Facebook Live, which is exciting because we realize we want to try to reach as many people as we can and know that we have to figure out ways to be able to do that. And so for those of you that are out there tonight, if you wanted to submit a question, you can do that. And Mrs. Basson will try to get that up to me. Uh, one of the things we want to do is uh, be respectful of your time. And we wanted to keep this within about an hour this evening. And so we have gotten a few questions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the question out to the group. If you have one and would like to ask it, the microphone is there. You're welcome to do that, and uh, we'll be glad to take any question you might have on the fly. So let me, uh, which, I'm not sure which one of you want to take this particular question, but um, I guess, Debbie, this might go to you. Um, has there been other feedback that you've heard so far from parents and staff about the newly implemented all-day kindergarten program that you didn't share tonight? Actually, um, all the teachers are loving all day. It's been an adjustment because of having two shorter periods, and boys and girls can hold it together pretty well for two and a half hours, but when they're there for seven, it takes a little bit of learning in order to control those behaviors and be on focus. But they're very excited about that because they have opportunities to do things that they didn't have opportunities to do before. So kids get to play. They get to learn social-emotional. I got to see a lesson with um, Second Step, it goes beautifully with all the curriculum pieces, and they blended right together. So it's, it's going really well. And parents also like it, too, because of what their boys and girls are saying when they come home. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question, I think Dan von Handorf will be able to answer this one. Um, what does the Kettering City Schools currently have in place to help support our students with basic health care needs? 
And are there plans to expand on this? There are a lot of supports in place uh, for basic health care needs. I think one thing that was eye-opening to me when we started looking at tracking data of those health care needs, uh, our nurses do a great job of tracking things like office visits and how many times they need to provide treatment. Back in 2012-13, uh, we tallied just over 13,000 office visits for the school year. Fast forward to 2018, we had over 35,000 office visits uh, by our kids. And so just that, uh, going to the nurse's office to receive care, uh, it is amazing the growth of needs from our children. Um, and so one of the things that we've done to address those needs is to increase our nurse staffing. Back in 2012-13, we had six and a half nurses, so six full-time licensed school nurses uh, and one part-time. Uh, fast forward to today where we have uh, just over 11 uh, full-time nurses in our buildings, and that is to meet that need. Another interesting statistic um, as far as treatments go, so either a nurse giving a treatment or giving medication to a student back in 2012-13, uh, we had um, just under 10,000 times when a student came and either needed medical treatment or needed medication. Fast forward to 2018-19, and there were 28,000 times during the school year where a child needed treatment or needed medication, which is just amazing. Uh, there are some other things that uh, we do uh, in the school system that the community might not know about. For example, we partner with healthy schools, so all of our children can get flu shots right during school, during the school day with parents' permission. Uh, we work with the Ohio Optometric Association, uh, the optometrists in the IC program. They provide free glasses and free eye screenings for children, which is so important when we talk about student learning. They have to be able to see to be able to learn. Uh, we work with uh, School Smiles and the Five Rivers Health Centers to provide dental sealants for kids. And then finally, uh, and very importantly, we do vision and hearing screenings for children in preschool, first grade, third grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade, and 11th grade for all of our students. And that is also so important to know that they can hear what our teachers and other kids are saying. So there are a lot of support systems in place uh, that we do to help kids. Thank you very much. Does anybody have a question they'd like to come up and ask? You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tennille Love, and I'm a current um, parent of a student who is a junior right now at Fairmont. And uh, my question, I'm not sure who could answer the question, but my question is in regards to what the district is doing in terms of becoming more trauma informed and trauma skilled, especially considering um, the era that we live in and the circumstances that um, we're all surrounded by in terms of gun violence. We mentioned suicides that have occurred, um, of course, to natural disasters. So I'd just like to know what is the district doing in regards to that? Sure. Thank you. Dan? That's a great question, uh, something that weighs on all of our minds. Um, one of the great community partners that we have, we work with the Adamus Board. Uh, they provide youth mental health first aid training. Uh, and we have, for the last two years, offered that as a session to our staff members during professional development days. Uh, they can choose that as a session where they get trained uh, on youth mental health first aid. Uh, we've had over 60 of our staff members who are passionate about that. They have volunteered to attend full day sessions for uh, youth mental health first aid. And then another really exciting piece to the Hope Squads that doesn't get a lot of publicity is they provide just fantastic training to our staff members who serve as mentors. Uh, we have had over 15 of our staff members at the middle school and high school who are trained uh, to be Hope Squad mentors. And then uh, over 50 students at the high school that go to class every single day to learn things like uh, QPR, so question, persuade, and respond to students uh, 
uh, whose peers, uh, they, um, they usually don't talk to adults, but they will talk to their friends. And so those students are trained as listeners. They're trained to question their peers and persuade them to come and talk to an adult who might have thoughts of uh, either suicide or hurting other people. And so we're building a network out there of both kids and teachers uh, so that we're able to address the needs that our students have. I would say that's an ongoing process, uh, but we're excited to continue that training. Uh, and we're really excited about Hope Squads and the training that our staff and students are receiving. Um, our middle school, at the middle school level, uh, we just uh, took student nominees. And so both of our middle schools are going to have dozens of kids who go through the same process to get trained uh, to be listeners for their peers and make sure those peers get help from the adults that are trained in their buildings. So that's definitely on our mind and we're working hard to make sure there are services there for kids. Thank you, appreciate that. We have time, I think, for one last question. So I have it that was sent to us prior to today. Um, what, was, what is the process for rolling out the strategic plan? Well, uh, this is part of the process. We anticipate, um, we have taped this tonight, we have videotaped this, so we plan on putting that on our website, so if anybody wanted to view it and see how we're doing, and then we hope to make this a tradition. So every year we hope to come back and revisit our progress. We also have 11 project leadership statements that we will have online for view only, so people can see how we're doing. How's their progress in 11 str key strategic areas? And also, uh, we all have a responsibility to get out and talk to our community partners and make sure that we communicate our progress and how it relates to our strategic plan. Uh, tonight, as you can see, um, these folks work super hard, uh, our principals, our teachers, our staff, and we have a great community. And we've been very blessed to be supported to implement so many creative and innovative things that ultimately help our students succeed. And our goal is that every child walks out of Fairmont High School as a person that could go into, really simply the goals are, they go right into the workforce, they look at going into right into a two-year or four-year school, the United States military, or some level of entrepreneurship, if that's what they choose to do. And our goal is to help them achieve that. Every kid doesn't want to go to a four-year school. And we know that that's the case for a lot of our students, but many do. And we want to continue the high level of academic achievement. We're very pleased this year. Uh, our academic progress report from the Ohio Department of Education on our state report card continues to rise. Uh, our latest report card was a B overall as a district, and we're very proud of that. Uh, but a B isn't good enough, and we know that. And uh, none of us sought Bs, uh, even though I was sleeping in kindergarten. Uh, you know, <laughs> I always was encouraged to have an A. And so uh, we want that for our kids. We want that for our community. We want to be a destination district. I mentioned before we started, uh, one of our key partnerships is with the city of Kettering. We couldn't ask for a better group of people who truly care about kids and care about this community immensely. And we appreciate them and all the things that they do for us. Our Board of Education is, is aligned to do what's best for kids. And they hold us to a high standard. And I, I want them to. We hold ourselves to a high standard. And I want to thank everybody that was up here tonight for their presentations. I also want to just a couple uh, quick thank yous to people that helped make this happen tonight because obviously things like this can't happen without a lot of support. I really want to thank Mrs. Carrie Basson, our coordinator of uh, community relations. Carrie does everything. Uh, she helps us get these set up. She coordinates all of our audio visuals and we just want to appreciate Carrie for that. I want to thank Mr. John Gentry and Laura Hutchins tonight for being here to assist us as well. Again, thank you for attending tonight, our first State of the Schools presentation, and have a great evening, and thank you for your time.